Today we're taking a first look at the BC Originals Podsole. There are three or four bikes out there with some cutting edge geometry that I'm really excited about, and this is one of them. This frame is made by BC Original. BC stands for Bike Components. Bikecomponents.de, they are the German retailer that sells bike parts, components, and they even have some original items called BC Original. That's where they build house brand components. And so today we're gonna to be featuring their frame and a couple of their components as well on this build. Over half of my audience on YouTube lives outside the United States. So even though I'm in Arizona and I'm riding our Arizona trails, a lot of you, I realize, are in Germany, England, Europe, Asia. I've got a lot of friends in the Philippines. We've got people in Mexico, Brazil, Chile, all over the place. And so it's fun to feature a product from Germany and from the other side of the pond. And this has some really exciting things going on with it, namely the geometry, the weight, and the price. I just threw this frame on the scale and it came in at 4.16 pounds. That is super light, especially for the price. Most aluminum bikes I get in are between four and a half and five and a half pounds. So this is definitely on the lighter end of the spectrum. I think this bike is on the affordable end of the spectrum as well. And I know some of you are, just get mad anytime I say budget or affordable, and you think anything that costs more then lunch at your favorite restaurant is not affordable. Well, here's a news flash. Mountain biking is expensive. It's a luxury sport. And so when I talk about affordable, I'm talking about affordable for the bikes that I would want to ride. I'm not interested in reviewing bikes that don't have boost spacing or through axles or modern geometry. This bike is intended to be a step below an enduro hardcore hardtail and above an XC bike. So a trail bike, pretty much where most of us are riding our hardtails. This bike is built around a 120 to 140 mil fork, which I think is perfect. I don't like forks over 140 and I don't like forks under 120. It's got a 65 degree head angle for a light trail zippy bike. And I love that. I think that's the sweet spot for most of the trails that I ride on a hardtail. It's got a 74 degree seat angle, which isn't the steepest on the planet, but they paired it with a medium to medium shortish reach and that works well. When you get a super long reach, I want the seat angle steeper. When you've got a short reach, I want it slacker. Basically, when I'm seated to the bars, I don't want to be stretched out and hunched over. I get back pain throughout the day. I just get fatigued and my body's in an awful position for a long time in the saddle and it's just awkward. I like a short seated feel to the bars and when I stand, I want it to be long. So as the reach gets longer, I want the seat angle steeper so that the bars don't get further away. I want it seated or if the reach is short, I want it slacker. So that's why in some of my reviews, I don't mind a 74 degree seat angle on some bikes and on other bikes, I say it needs to be steeper because that proportion is just off. I'm five foot six with super short legs and a long torso. I have the torso of someone 5'10", so I like long reaches, but I have super short legs, so I need a short seat tube with a lot of drop in it. Uh, this is a size medium and it has the 442 mil reach and a 435 mil chainstay. And you'll often hear me talk about the reach versus rear center measurement. And I definitely prefer it when the rear center is shorter than the reach, which it is in this case. All right, enough talking about this frame. Let's get it built up and then I'll tell you some more things that I love about it. There are a lot of tiny details that are really refined on this bike, like this little cover here. This guy keeps mud out of your frame and seat tube. You know, we've all seen that expansion slit there that allows the tube to compress when we put our dropper on. Well, this is really cool. It's a little mud flap that stays over it to keep mud and junk out. I love little things like that. I also love that this is a straight seat tube with no water bottle bosses on it. So I'm not gonna have to worry about my dropper hitting a stopper point. You can fit long droppers in these things. It's almost like they watch the channel and know what I like and don't like and decided to, to put that in their bike. It's pretty cool. I'm sure they didn't. They probably had no clue who I was till I reached out to them. But man, this thing's cool. For the dropper, we're going with my tried and true 9.8 Falline R dropper, the Hardtail Party Edition. It was cool, they engraved my logo on there. I really appreciate that. This is a 150 mil dropper. It fits in there, no problem. I love these droppers, really, really love them. They run low pressure. They're like 30 PSI inside there. So to me, they last a lot longer. 
You can adjust the seat position without changing the angle, which is super nice. Saddle swaps are super quick. They also have a self reset button. So if they get any play in it, you hold down the lever for 10 seconds and it bleeds itself and it's ready to go again. Anyway, that's what we're running for our dropper. You'll notice there's no seat stay bridge. I love that. More tire clearance. I just love the look. There's some nice machining on those yokes. We've got a post mount. This will accept up to a 180 mil rear. Chain stay protection on the seat stay and the chain stay. Not as robust as some, but we'll see if it works. I like the dropout system. I just think it's a really sleek looking frame. Threaded bottom bracket, straight seat tube, and minimal, AKA no graphics. The only branding on this whole frame is right there. And I love that. I love the understated look. So many bikes have way too many graphics plastered all over them. And believe me, when your bike looks good, people will ask you what it is. So I'm a big fan of the understated graphics and the matte black looks really good. Now it also comes with a sticker pack so you can customize it and make it your own. And I think that's fun. I think we take biking a little too serious sometimes and put the stickers on how you want it. Make it yours, get creative, paint it for all I care. Make it a cool bike. I think there's something to be said for having a personalized bike that's more than just grip color or pedal color. It's fun to, to make it yours. So I'm, I'm a big fan of what they're doing here and I fully support that. I love the look of this frame. I know a lot of you love a perfectly straight angle from there to here. I actually prefer this look. It reminds me of a, just a classic bike design and this thing looks really good. I love it. The whole nature of this frame is simple and understated and hopefully it lets the riding and the geometry do the talking. I'm a big fan of that. These guys also sent along some parts they wanted to feature on the build and they wanted me to tell you about them. Level 9 is their house brand. We're going to be running the Level 9 Carbon All Mountain Bars. These look beautiful. I'm going to trim these down to 760 because that's what I run on all my bars. I'm going to mount that up to a 40 mil Level 9 stem. I love how a lot of carbon bars are now coming with this tape with the little beads of glass on them already that keeps it from twisting in the stem. That means you don't have to apply the carbon fiber assembly paste anymore because it's already on this tape. Nice job, level nine. That's cool to see. I had to paint that silver with some Sharpie just to make it stand out. I thought it looked kind of cool. Make it your own. For cranks, we're going with race face affix because I have so many bikes in for review right now that my parts are on multiple bikes that are getting reviewed and these are the only cranks I have left. They're fine cranks, but there's one problem and race face has been doing this on a few different models. These are 170 mil cranks, but they're the length of a 175. The holes at 170, but rather than you know shorten the crank, they just drill the hole five mils down. So you get the same amount of pedal strikes as if you had a 175. Now I still like the smaller pedaling circle, but that's kind of dumb. It just means a lot of unnecessary crank strikes, but that's one way they save money is they cast all their cranks the same size and then just drill the hole where they need it. The attention to detail, the welds, the fit and finish, the facing on the headset and the bottom bracket are top notch. They're among the best I've seen on any frame. For wheels, by components sent in their BC Lomer wheel set. It's not super high engagement. This is meant to be a budget wheel set to get you going and something you can upgrade later. Um, it's a center lock only. So I'll be running some DT Swiss center lock to six bolt adapters. So the inner width of the rim 27.5 so it's a little bit narrower rim all right let's get some tires mounted on here you can swap the drivers out you can order this in hg like this xd or micro spline i like hg because that's what the micro shift advent x runs and that's what i run on almost every single one of my bikes tires mounted up real easy i'm going to use my favorite shop tool my milwaukee inflator I don't even use a compressor anymore. This thing's so great. I just set my target pressure. Hit go and it stops when it's at that pressure. I got a link in the description if you're interested in something like this for your shop. Wow, those seated up really nicely. And these wheels came with rim tape. That's a light wheel. So I'm comparing the rim profile to my Stan's arches and they're 
almost identical. It might be a tad higher, very similar rim profile. These feel powder coated and these feel glossy painted. So that'll be interesting to see. All right, tires mounted up super easy. These remind me a lot of Stan's arch wheels. Um, they're nice and light. I like the minimal graphics. We are running my favorite budget drivetrain, the MicroShift Advent X. 10 speed and 11 to 48, all the gears I ever need. You can buy two drivetrains for the price of a GX cassette. So that's saying something. And it's lighter than a Shimano XT. I have zero affiliation with MicroShift. I pay full price for these. And they're still cheaper than the industry deals I can get on Shimano and SRAM stuff. So I just keep buying it. It's a really good way to save money when you're building up your bike. If you need advice while you're building up your bike, you're not sure which fork to get or which cranks or whatever, that's a feature I offer on my Patreon. I also do bike consultation on my Patreon. So if you need help deciding your next bike, that's something I can help with. I never just say bike A is the best bike, period, or the bike A is better than bike B. It depends on where you ride. It depends on how you ride. It depends on what you like. And that's why none of my reviews just come out and say, everyone should buy this bike and forget about everything else. Or when people in the comments say, this bike versus the Specialized Fuse, which is better? The answer is always, it depends. It depends on what you're looking for, what your trails are like. And through the consultation practice, we work together to decide which one would be best for you. I wonder who this bike is gonna be best for. So far, this build has been flawless. This frame is real easy to build up. I'm running a 235 Recon Race on the back. And uh, actually the closest clearance is with the seat tube. So I think if you were to try something bigger, you'd have issues in there. It'd be interesting to see. This thing's cool. I'm tempted to make a nice lightweight build and keep it snappy on the trails, but still have that great geo. I've always said that if an XC bike had modern geo, I'd have a blast on it. And uh, I think we're going to find out. This isn't an XC bike per se, but I think it's going to have a lot of that fun XC character. Hopefully it's not too stiff. We'll have to see. There's no seat stay bridge, which lets it flex up here a little bit. I usually like that. And usually when these mount up near the seat tube, it gives a little better ride. We shall see. All right, here's one thing I would do differently. The cable routing is on the underside of the chain stay. I don't know who would ever, it's gonna come, it's gonna come through here and then go under the chain stay. They should have put them on top. I think they just messed up because that would lead to this a lot better. And so I don't know who would be able to get a hose to there. I'm tempted to just zip tie it to the top although this will keep it out of the way of the tire. So I'll probably zip tie it to there, but that's one thing I would change is move these to the top, then it can run right along there. And these are the things you don't think about until you build up a bike and see it in front of you. So that's why I do these first looks. All right, we got it all built up. I've got some of my favorite parts on it. Ergon grips, uh, some SRAM level brakes. These aren't my favorite, but they work just fine and I had them in my box, so that's what's going on. We are running the level nine stem and carbon bar. Excited about that. 9.8 digit dropper remote and the 9.8 dropper uh, helm Mark II. That's a pretty heavy fork for a bike like this. This bike came in at 27.78 pounds, which is pretty light for having a helm on it and you know, a 150 mil dropper and cheap affect cranks and cheap brakes and stuff. I'll bet you could get this under 25 pounds easily. Uh, what else did I notice? I don't like the cable routing. I don't like how sharp the bends are here. Other than that, I love the simple, clean, minimalist, understated looks of this. The only logo's on that head badge, which is all matte black anyway. And I think the name of this game, it's kind of like that sleeper car that pulls up to you at the red light. It doesn't rev its engine, it's so unassuming, and then it turns green and it just leaves you in the dust. I think this bike is going to be a sleeper, and I love that. I love the understated aspect of this. I'm really excited to ride this bike. This is the bike that when it came out, I was like, finally. It's like somebody watched my What Does the Future of Hardtails Look Like video where we talked about 65 degree head angles on 120 to 130 mil bikes that are still light and zippy and retain that amazing characteristic of a great hardtail but don't feel twitchy like an XC race bike. And I think we're gonna see a lot more bikes in these geometry numbers coming forward. 
Another thing I didn't love, this has the same problem as my Banshee Paradox. When you put a water bottle on it, it wants to pinch the cables. So I actually ran one of the nuts from a valve stem underneath as a spacer underneath each bolt and it lifted it up just enough. So there's a little hack for you. If you have a Paradox or one of these or another bike that routes the cables on the top of the down tube near the water bottle mount. I'm really excited. This thing looks rowdy. I can't wait. There's only one thing left to do and that's listen to this nearly silent hub that doesn't have a ton of engagement so it's going to be quieter. <laughs> 